So over the last 30 minutes, we got a chance to hear David Kohler and Rabs and Kachi speak about experiential luxury. And two of the things that I heard them speak about was a richness in environment and a richness in experience. So once again, my name is Jason Sarai. I am the founder and creative director of Style by Sarai and Sarai Bespoke. And in the world of style and fashion, experiential luxury is a lifestyle. It's about empowering individuals to feel strong and confident in their own personal style. And you may ask, how does one do that? What we try to encourage is that our clients and our network become their own style icon. Be your own style icon is a tagline and a mantra that we've used since the inception of the business. And that began in 2012. At that point, I was in corporate finance. I was a high net worth wealth management advisor for RBC Dominion Securities. And it was in the corporate space that I realized that there was a creative void that I wanted to fill in my life. My brother, who's an optometrist in Chicago, he sent a link to me in 2011 saying, watch this movie, it's called Crazy Stupid Love, you should be this guy from this movie. And within a week of that, a well-to-do CEO who was in his early 40s, he posted on Facebook saying, I want Ryan Gosling's entire wardrobe from this movie. Minutes after, within the thread of that, a mutual friend's wife said, Jason Sarai can point you in the right direction. And it was by watching that movie that I realized that there was a gap in the market that I could be hired as a consultant to outsource the fashion and style needs for the male demographic. And over the next two years, what started as a passion project, I was being hired on two tiers. One tier being that I would be hired by companies to speak to their sales and executive teams about the power of style and how to put your best foot forward to create a lasting impression. And we would talk about the psychology and statistics that supported that. The other component of the consulting is where I would work and delve in further one-on-one -on, -one on the image and style consulting and we would go to the home of the client. And this is where we would understand their past experience where they were and where they wanted to go. And we would understand what kind of environment that they were in, what kind of style that required in that space, but also the rest of their lifestyle. What kind of social events they went to, what kind of extracurricular, travel, galas. And it was through that conversation we got to understand a holistic approach of like what made them tick. And through that conversation, we would then go do an audit of their wardrobe go see what aligned to where they wanted to go, and we would create a no pile, maybe, and we would do alterations or salvage it, and then yes. But it was following that that we would create a document that really curated their lifestyle. And in this consulting space, we would send a document breaking this down, take them shopping, and depending on their budget, curate outfits that supported that. But until 2014, Style by Sarai was just a passion project. And it wasn't until we got into the product line by creating our own bespoke garment that it changed to having the potential of being a full-time business. In 2014, we had a diversifying uh, portfolio of revenue where we had the consulting with the growth of Instagram. We had uh, the brand influence and marketing collaborations, public speaking, events. But when we started to build our bespoke line, we had to look at if we were going to be in the production line and knowing that our clients are from this high net worth background and we're already purchasing luxury products, we needed to understand how to maintain in that luxury space and what it meant to us. And for us, luxury is about exclusivity. Luxury is about design, innovation, technology. We look at components of luxury from an element of craftsmanship and quality. But we also believe luxury is a value. It is a way of life and it's a way of living. And in order to build Style by Sarai and Sarai Bespoke, we also knew that we had to create a stronger culture and ethos within the business. And that's where we needed to determine what our core values were as well as what our living values were and our goals. And those being connection, pushing the boundaries, defined by your actions and community. And I was doing some research on Kohler and it was interesting to see that even though we're offering a different end product, some of our core values and goals overlapped with theirs being honest, honesty and integrity, 
but also it was about continuous improvement. It was about uh, building trust and putting your clients first. So I think within the world of luxury and lifestyle, when you take away the product, the underlying foundation remains the same. So when we look at our core values a little bit deeper, when we look at connection, we look at scraping away the superficial to get to the core. For us to curate and create a bespoke garment for an individual, we really need to understand who they are. For us just to give what's trending and in style, that's very easy to do, but they may not relate to them. It may not bring out the best version of themselves. We truly believe that everyone has an inner artist and a creative side, but it's largely, uh, for a large part of the population, it's untapped and suppressed. So how do we extrapolate that out of them? Connection is key. So most of our consultations, over 90% are held at our showroom in Gastown. And it's there that we do a deep dive into research even before we meet our clients. It's by appointment only, and we live in a time now that it's pretty hard pressed not to find something out about someone through some social media platform, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. But then we also can go onto their company page. And within our space, and the companies and the clientele, the niche market we're dealing with, the likelihood is there's gonna be some kind of interview, interview or some accolade received from their companies so that before they even come, we already have a strong foundation of what we believe, but it's not until we meet that we delve into that further. So we like to bring that European approach to business and lifestyle of slowing things down. We also have an appreciation of the Asian business culture in terms of building trust and rapport before we do any talk of business. So when we host consultations at our office, we have a charcuterie board already set up. We speak to them depending on the time of the day, whether they want an espresso or a cappuccino, a non-alcoholic beverage. We'll make a Negroni, an old fashioned, pull out some whiskey, scotch, cognac, you name it. Depending on what they're wanting, we want to bring back what we know goes back against the test of time is breaking bread. And through that, we build a level of relationship and connection. And that is key to getting to that creative design. So when we look at some of the things that we've been able to do is by connecting, we've been able to navigate and guide people to truly select things that represent them. And we've seen people come in and just say, I just want a standard blue suit. And they're like, just tell us what to make, Jay. Y you know, you were in Italy, just tell us. And we're like, that's not the process. Let's, let's do this conversation. Let's, let's see where this bouncing ball goes. And it's through this long conversation that we're able to see these clients start to gravitate to fabrics that they weren't initially saying. They started to get involved in the creative design and started to select every single element from the shoulders to the buttons, to the lapels, to the cut. And those that wanted to be on the more quiet, elegant side, they may have spoke more on their lining. An example being one of our clients in the insurance space, it was a very basic burgundy jacket, but then he got a custom Iron Maiden lining on the inside. And I had to ask him, I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, I want Eddie from Iron Maiden. And I'm like Google searching it. I'm like, send him a photo of a skeleton and a, uh, playing, and playing the guitar. And he's like, that's the one without the background. And he opens it up in every meeting he goes into. And when we get to see these kind of creative designs come out of it, it's not so much the showroom that matters. It's about creating that connection. And now as we build out our clientele to Toronto, Chicago, New York, LA, and now London, it's, this is the most important part. The next component is pushing the boundaries. And that's about being boundless, limitless, creative, and continued growth. And I'm a firm believer of doubling down on your strengths and outsourcing your weaknesses. And for us in the world of manufacturing and fabrics, these are key. So when we look at fabrics, when we first started, it was all about amassing as many companies as possible. That's what I thought was the best to showcase massive show, uh, book cases of fabrics upon fabrics. And it was through hearing from our clients that 
it was too much. It was visual overload and it was daunting to select amongst 10 plus thousand worth of fabrics. And it was through their feedback that over time, we decreased this to only a few companies. So working with the likes of Skabal, Xenia, and Laura Piana, we knew they were doing the necessary research and development to give us the best education and offering, whether that be from their forecasts and trends, and whether it be from a texture and palette and design. We also knew that they were incorporating innovation and technology to see what the client wants now and what they're wanting for the future. So whether it was more mechanical stretch or implementing new, uh, new fabrics together, we, need, we knew they were doing what they needed to do. And by having less companies, it also allowed us to create stronger relationships with their sales teams, which ultimately we are middlemen to provide key components of a garment to create my end garment line with our clients. Sustainability is a big component in the luxury space and within the bespoke world and the rise of fast fashion, people are being far more conscious of our footprint on the environment with the selection of their clothing. So we're looking at how do we get the most wear out of our garments to last and not just be something that we're constantly switching. So when we navigate and work with clients, we're very mindful of how do you get the most out of this. Another component is the manufacturing. When we outsource the manufacturing, we need to trust them once again on the research and development. One component being that when I started the Fab, uh, uh, Sarai Bespoke line in 2015, or 2014, sorry, the women's bespoke space didn't exist. The limitations and customizations that were offered then was nowhere near the same level of what we could create for our male clientele. So it took almost five years of R&D to finally get to a place where they were on the same level. And last year, we were able to launch that. And when we went through this level of manufacturing, one thing in the world is the ability to have choice. And we presented that to our clients, having a selection of the same fabrics, we knew that within manufacturing, there is that old world of craftsmanship in the suiting space. So how do we pay homage and respect to that, but then also look at innovation and technology coming uh, uh, to the front end of this? So by providing two options with old world craftsmanship, hand-drawn patterns, more hand finishing, we were able to select Napoli being two manufacturers there. And then also offering state-of-the-art equipment, technology, machine finish with hand components to it of being in China. And giving that element of choice allowed our, uh, our company to flourish over the last few years. The second component is that our clients within the pushing the boundaries is about outsourcing their component of learning to us. Like they are time strapped, so they're depending on us to provide them with the information and tools and, and the trends. And by going and traveling to London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, and Pidiomo, Pidiomo is a conference that's held in Florence every January and June. And it's there that 30,000 plus people come to attend. Over 1,200 vendors are there to display their uh, outlook of what's going to be trending within the space for every spring, summer, and fall, winter. And it's there that we get to understand real time what the biggest influencers, bespoke tailors, and, and brands are doing. And there's no way that we can replicate that or like understand that truly unless we fully immerse ourselves by traveling and being a part of that culture. And we're getting to meet individuals like Alessandro Sartori on the right, who is the former uh, artistic director of Berluti and now of Xenia. We get to meet fashion enthusiasts like Alexander Kraft on the left, who's the CEO of Sotheby Internationals. But these are people that live and breathe it. And it's that impact of our clients getting to see real time that we're surrounding ourselves not only amongst our brand, but other people that appreciate it, that when we come back, they're like, okay, what did you see? When we look at fashion and clothing in the lifestyle, it's only one silo. And that's when we realize if we don't want to be situated and just pegged as a suit brand, 
we need to start complementing all components of lifestyle. So whether it's watches, cars, food, wine, and when we look at home and interior design, these are all elements that complement it. And then clothing then becomes a byproduct of you just dressing well or how you want to feel in that respective realm. And the montage video that we watched at the beginning was what we started to do is where we started to collaborate with brands and some of them being iconic in their own space, but they had an appreciation for history, craftsmanship, technology, innovation. But by partnering with them and telling a story, it painted a picture and it also we were able to leverage and bring up our brand to be along the name side, along the, the, the side of iconic names. Defined by your actions, this is a, a core value that was from the movie Batman, and it was, uh, there was a scene where it says it's not, she, Katie Holmes says to Christian Bale, it's not who you are underneath, it's your actions that define you. And I think in this world where social media is painting a picture that you don't know if that is exactly the true story, we are based on our actions each and every day. Regardless of providing an end product, it's every step, are we doing it thoroughly and giving the customer experience the one that they should have? We need to do this from a reputation, a consistency standpoint, and these are things that we're held accountable, both within the team, every person within this, but it is something that we need to find alignment also with our clients and our manufacturers and fabric suppliers. And the last component is Community. So community for us is key both on a personal and professional level. For us, uh, it's a pillar and on a personal level, it was almost 2012, the same year that we started Style by Sarai, being in finance, my good friend Riaz Megji of Brexit Television, we started a not-for-profit not -for -profit to support causes and organizations that are in need. So it's a privilege and an honor to be able to do that, but it's a responsibility as well as looking at people that are also wanting to come up into the industry because everyone here today has had some help along the way. So we had the opportunity to be a part of Covenant House Vancouver in 2012 and be a part of their first uh, uh, executive sleep out. And I'm happy to be able to have uh, been a part of every year since. And last year being invited to join the executive committee and collectively with the donors and sponsors, we raised over a million dollars towards an amazing cause. The other component of community is also about understanding that we're not gonna be making bespoke garments for everyone. And that there is a shared appreciation for luxury and lifestyle and the finer things or craftsmanship and quality. So we started to begin these soirees by Sarai where we would create these intimate and exclusive spaces where people would come together in this invite-only event. And we would showcase different components of lifestyle, but then in this setting, bring together people that had shared commonalities. It's again, for us, experiential luxury is a lifestyle. It's about empowering individuals to feel strong and confident in their own personal style and to be their own style icon. Thank you so much for your time.